Jefferson, velo subiendo a panelistas, porfa. Sobre todo a Mircan primero. Listo, ya tenemos a Khan. Hey, how are you? Hi, how are you, Khan? I'm good, thank you. Keep going. I'm good, thank you. How is, how is Mr. Gilberto? Is he on there as well? Hello, hello, sir. I'm your biggest fan from India. Oh, from India. Hello, how are you? Good, sir. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. Okay, bro. A ver, Guacho, ¿estamos listos? Sí, Ludo, estamos listos. Ok. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start in Spanish and then we'll talk in English. Eh, primero que todo, buenos días, amigos. Les damos gracias por participar en la convención número 99 de la Asociación Mundial de Buceo en línea. Esta vez tenemos una sorpresa muy especial. La participación del gran campeón británico Amir Khan, ex campeón mundial unificado de las 140 libras, los super ligeros, ex campeón mundial de la Asociación Mundial de Boxeo, super ligero. Good morning, friends. Thank you to join us here in the WBA convention, number 99 convention of the WBA. Right now we have a very special guest, former unified Super lightweight world champion Amir Khan, Kingdom champ. Welcome to the WBA 99 convention. Hi, thank you very much, um, <laughs> and it's amazing to be part of this WBA convention and to see everybody. Alfredo, how are you? Nice to see you, and uh, also my dear friend Gilberto, also you Ludo as well, and everybody else. So I want to say hello to everybody and thank you for having me on. Sham, it's a great honor for all of us that you are part of this. This is very special to us because we are celebrating right now for next year, from now to next year, for 100 year anniversary of the WBA. Amazing, amazing. And you know, this is amazing what the WBA has done in the recent years. Has been, in the last 100 years, it's been amazing. The work that you guys have done, not only in the boxing ring, but in other sports and also in the charity world. See, what's very close to me and close to my heart is doing the charity work and helping the less fortunate people. And the World Boxing Association is always doing that. So hats off to you guys. You guys are doing an amazing job. And you are a very important part of the WBA family champ. You were a former world champion on 140. You know, it was very historic. You know, when you uh, accomplished your first world title, you know, you were a very accomplished boxer before that. You were a silver, silver medalist in the Olympics. Uh, you know, we want to, to, to learn a little bit about that particular experience when you, when you won the silver, the silver medal in the Olympics. Tell us about it, Cham. So, um, I remember... Oh, mate, Cam, you got put in the, this place. I, I remember going to the Junior Olympics and... Um, I won the gold medal there and someone in America um, came over to me and said, are you going to be going to the Olympics uh, in 2004? Oh, and I said that, what are you talking about? I go, you know, this is, um, I'm too young. I'm only 17 years old. I can't go to the Olympics. But then they said, no, you are able to go to the Olympics and you can do this by going to the qualifiers. So then I decided to qualify, go to the qualifiers. I was the youngest British boxer to ever accomplish. Uh, <laughs> Olympics and I went there and hopefully um, look if you look back now how I come back I come back as um, Olympic silver medalist being the youngest ever from Great Britain so it was a great success and also like, nobody knew me in the UK or nobody knew me around the world it was then that the whole world knew what I mean, was and the Olympics for me was a great platform 
And this is maybe something else I would like to say to all the young fighters out there and the, and, and, and the promoters out there is that having that Olympic background definitely gives you that extra push and extra edge going into uh, your, the professional ranks, especially. See, before I even turned professional, I was selling at arenas. 10,000 arenas I was selling out because of the Olympic background, which gave me the platform. Thank you, champ. Uh, you can hold on just for a minute. I want to send uh, tell a message. Antes de iniciar, eh, también para que sepan, eh, pueden ten, eh, contar con la aplicación Interprefile. La pueden descargar en sus teléfonos inteligentes o en su tablet con el password WBA 99 Convention WBA 99 C O N V E N T I O N WBA 99 Convention todo en mayúscula. Y para que puedan conectar sus audífonos y disfrutar la, la, la interpretación eh, simultánea. Eh, we want to remind, re, remind everybody that you can download the application Interprefy. You can download that in your smartphone or tablet with the password WBA99 Convention, all capitalized, if you want to enjoy the simultaneous uh, 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 translation. When you find how broke. If you want to, uh, if you yo, want yo, to yo, enjoy yo, yo. The, the translation in English or Spanish. Hello. Uh, we continue with the champ. Eh, les recordamos a todos los participantes que si quieren para, eh, hacer alguna pregunta, la pueden hacer por medio del chat y lo vamos, eso lo, se lo vamos pasando al campeón. We want to remind everybody that you can uh, ask questions through our chat. Uh, champ, uh, let's continue. You know, now tell us a little bit uh, about when you became... Um, World champion, unified world champion when you beat Sad Judah in 2011. That was a big fight in your career. Champ, um, when it, when oh, we can't right hear you. you Sorry. Yeah. So the first world title I won as the WBA, which was the WBA world title, I won that against. Um, I'm uh, not Kotelnik, that's why you have a better memory than me. So um, I, be, I beat Kotelnik, I won the world title, and then from there, um, I went on and had the big fight against Zab Judah. Now, Zab Judah was obviously a, a world champion at the time as well. I was a WBA champion and the WBA super champion. So for me, it was a, it was a, it was a tough fight, and fighting as such a big name like Zab Judah, you know, he was a, he's a Hall of Fame fighter, and to be amongst them big names and fighting them big names and beating them big names were amazing and just before that Zab Judah fight I'd won the best fights of my career which was against Marcos Antonio no Marcos Maidana now Marcos Maidana was a, a beast a hell of a fighter who also was the interim WBA champion at the time Cheers. so you know we had uh, we had some we had a war of a fight what a fight it was I mean it was toe to toe and it was an amazing fight but you know it's uh, I look back to those fights and I think wow like how did I stand up to all that the big punches and everything because, you know, boxing is a tough sport and um, you always want to live another day, you know, and with having fights like that, too many fights like the Maidana fight can be... Yes, 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 man. Yes, yes. Andreas Kotelnik, that particular fight was in Manchester. First Correct. time that you... Hello, hello, hello. hello you hello, earned hello, the, hello, the hello, world... Hello, hello, tell us hello, a little bit about your experience hello, hello. when you earned the, the world title. The first time you, you earned the yeah, world, world title. Uh, amazing. Look, boxing. The best experience in the world. It was the best, best, best You need to fight Cal Brook. You need to shut Cal Brook Basically... Basically, what happened was in the fight against Kotelnik, you know, my dream was always to become a world champion. And um, I always wanted to win that world title. And that was my chance to beat Kotelnik and then become a world champion. So for me, it was like, it was the biggest fight of my career because Kotelnik at that time had had many fights and he was only lost one fight. Uh, and he was, a, he was a beast. And I remember seeing Kotelnik fight in the UK as well. Like before that, and he knocked out one of the UK rivals that I had. And I thought, wow, this guy's a, a beast. And obviously, when the title was on the line, honestly, I had no doubt. When they said to me that you are going to fight Kotelnik for a world title, I said, look, put me in the ring with him now. And that's what they did. And I came out the winner. Damn! Thank you, Sham. Uh, Juancho, ¿tenemos alguna pregunta de los panelistas? Todavía no, todavía no. Okay, Sham. 
Well, you know, we know that after after you um, reign in 140, you know, you move up to 147, you, you competed for a while in, in that way, and then you did something very, that very few fighters do. You jump two, three divisions up, you fight with, you fought, I'm sorry, with Saul Canelo Alvarez, yeah. the WBC middleweight title of the world. Correct. That was a big super fight in your career. And, uh, and I mean, very brave of you to try to do <laughs> that. But uh, tell us about the entire experience, not only the fact that you, that you fought you also need to fight in an all-time great like you, but also the fact that you fought the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's such a big <laughs> scenario in the, boxing, in the boxing world. Yeah, so that fight was one of the biggest fights of my career because... Um, fighting against uh, such a big guy and obviously physically he was huge he must have walked into the ring at least 30 40 pounds heavier but look i was not, never afraid and i've never been afraid of fighting anyone uh, in the ring so when this cow when this uh, fight came up with um, alvarez i was like look i want this fight and a lot of people were saying to me that look are you crazy that like, he's so big and so strong but you know if you want to be great in the sport you have to make these uh, you have to take these chances and you have to take chances that people don't think you'll succeed in. And obviously, that's what I did. I went there and, uh, and I took that chance. It doesn't put me in a bad position because people can say that, look, and maybe this is some advice I can give to the other young fighters. See, I never ever wanted that unbeaten record to say, oh, I'm unbeaten. I'm picking my fights and fighting who I want. But what I wanted was to fight the best out there, mm -hmm. the prime fighters. And that's what I did. You know, through my, throughout my whole career, I fought the guys at the peak of their careers as well. I'm not fought guys who have been who have gone past, you know, their career. So when that fight came up, uh, and uh, at that time I was uh, with Al Heyman, and Golden Boy offered the fight to me. I done the deal myself with um, Golden Boy. Al Heyman released me for that one fight, and I went there. And I mean, it was the biggest event. I mean, I've never seen Vegas lit up. It, it was crazy and the atmosphere was huge a lot of people from England came there as well and it's something I'm always going to remember you know even though the fight didn't go my way but as an experience I've had in the sport it was amazing great chap we, have, we do have a question from Rincón Rojo tenemos una pregunta de Rincón Rojo eh, Rincón adelante Mr. Amir, may I ask a question, please? Sure, sure. Uh, I'm starting. I to, uh, I'm uh, a boxer, and I wanted to ask how could I reach the Olympics or a world champ? So, how you reach this is uh, first. I think as an amateur boxer, you know you have to um, do your international competition, do your national championships first, and then when they pick you as a national champion, they will then take you to international tournaments. That could be all around the world. And then when you've got the experience, as much as as much experience as you can get as an amateur, then you turn professional. And then you 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 work your way up and up and up. And also it's about getting with the right promoter as well. I think it's very interesting how like you know there's so many promoters out there, but it's about picking the right guy because in a way, a promoter's job is to look after your career and and also make sure that you get to that world title level fight. So Make sure that you um, get a good lawyer and a good promoter who then can take you to that world title level. Okay, uh, thank you, champ. Uh, Juancho, tenemos preguntas. We have questions, Juancho. Sí, a puño. No, I do have. Yeah. Okay, uh, Eliezer Gave, pregunta, Eliezer. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, uh, hello, Sham. Uh, how are you okay and all your family? Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you, doing well. Regard from Panama. Um, I would like to ask, um, because um, I've been in England. I went to England back in the days, and I, I was in the fight, uh, in your fight against Brad Prescott. And uh, yeah. it was a tremendous, uh, tremendous um, 
uh, you know, tremendous. I mean, before the fight, everybody wants to you to win, but well, things happen. Yeah. Um, you are a great fighter, as you say, you fought the best of the best in each category. But which of your lo which of your <coughs> losses has been the most difficult to get, you know, to get back after that? Because you know that when you yeah. lose is a is a is a mentally difficult yeah. to get back. Which one of those losses are the most difficult to 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 get uh you know to get back? From? Yeah, thanks for the question, Alicia. Um, basically, you, you know, you've I've, uh, I've had five losses in my career, and out of the five, there's probably two fights I can say that hurt me the most. One of them was against um, uh, Danny Garcia. Now, because you know, everything, all the titles were on the line. I had the WBA, I had the WBA Super, and I had the IBF. He had the WBC and um, and the and the Ring magazine. You see, you know. When things are going so well for you in your career, sometimes you take it for granted and you don't train as hard. The hunger is not in you. And I feel for that fight, it was one of the best wake-up calls I've ever had in my life because it made me realize that, look, I can't cheat in this sport. I can't not train hard. I have to always train hard and train like a, uh, like a challenger. And what I did was I was in training camp. I was, oh, you know, Danny Garcia can't do nothing to me. Who is he? He's not, he's not a big name. And look what happened. It was just that one punch that changed the fight. And since that fight, you know, I have totally changed my way of training, made sure I'm always 100% focused and always dedicated. And maybe this is something the, the young fighters also could take in, is always train hard and always train like a challenger. Never think you're the best because then there's always someone who, can, who will come over and beat you. And the, and the, other, and the other fight... Washington DC, um, and and obviously uh, when 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 the when the judges uh, said that uh, he um, you know when the judges said he had won the fight, I mean there was no way he won the fight. I was like I put him down twice in the fight, and how did he win the fight? Because I was the better boxer. I was the guy who was catching him. What I put him down two times, but uh, one thing where I have to respect uh, the WBA is because when the WBA heard that he was tested positive for taking testosterone and taking drugs the WBA reinstated me as world champion so in a way it didn't make the loss as bad but still you know uh, these are the main two fights here okay champ so we have Thank we you. do have we have some questions from um, the participants okay hold on a second yeah. Just drop us on there. Man. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read some of the questions, champ. Yeah, for sure. Uh, from Lautaro Moreno, he's asking, uh, what did you learn uh, from your fights when you were with Mario Quintelan Mesa? Yeah, Mario Quintelan Mesa was a Cuban two-time Olympic champion. And I fought him twice and... He beat me one time, and then I beat him the second time. But what a great fighter he was! You see, some of the fighters Damn. that we see, and some of the fighters that we 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 see, are yeah, Mario Kindlin was one of them Cuban champions uh, who um, never ever turned professional, and he was such a great fighter that you know um he had beaten i i only just found out this recently he had beaten miguel cotto in the amateurs and he had beaten me once in the amateurs and also some other big names who then went on to become world champions and maria kindlin was a cuban uh legend and i think he'll always be known as a legend this guy was very te technical uh very strong very smart and it was had quick hands I mean, who would know how his career would have gone if he did turn professional? But obviously, as Cubans, they cannot turn professional in their country. So, yeah. Sham, we have a question from Mauricio Reynoso. He's basically asking, um, how, how was your adaptation from an, from an Olympic boxer to a professional boxer? The transition, yeah. how was that for you? So for me, it was um, it, it was quite difficult at times. It was quite difficult at times because 
you know, when you making that transition, um, you know, you need as much fights and as, as much time in the gym. You need to keep on in the gym. You have to keep on training because that's going to slowly, slowly change your style as, you know, as when I was an amateur, we used to fight for two minutes. And then when I turned professional, we fight for four or three minutes each round, but uh, to up to 12 rounds. So obviously it's a longer fight. So it's all about pacing yourself and, 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 and being smart in there. So the transition for me, it wasn't too hard, but it was very exciting. Even though it was boxing, but it was just exciting because it, it brought something new to the table for me. And I, obviously, I love a I love a challenge. And for me, it was a, it was a nice challenge. Great, champ. Vamos a darle la palabra a Jason Banana Rosario que quiere saludar al campeón. Adelante, Jason. Okay. A ver, Juancho, tenemos preguntas. Okay, we're gonna move on, champ. We're gonna wait for for questions from the other uh, participants. Um, right now, you're competing 147. And you've been pretty much active. I mean, you fought twice last year. You know, we know that. You know, right now everything is in on the, in a, in a hold. You know, due to the pandemic, but. Um, you know, you, you did beat Billy D, a former world champion last year in your last fight. Uh, tell us what, what are your plans for the immediate future, right? You know, after all this is gone, all the pandemic is yeah. gone. See, it's hard to say because we don't know when boxing is going to open back up again. And the time it does open up again, we don't know when we are going to be allowed to fight in front of a big crowd. For example, now for me to fight behind closed doors, it's going to be very hard for me. You know, I'm not one of the fighters that can fight behind closed doors. I love to have an audience. I love to have people there to support you. Uh, but imagine having an empty room. I've been watching some videos. I know that Top Rank, uh, ESPN have been showing some events uh, behind closed doors. It's not the same. You know, especially for the top big fighters, it's not going to be the same having an empty arena, empty room where you're fighting. It's going to be like sparring. Now, for me, obviously, I know I fought two times. I would like to fight two times again. This uh, this year was my was my aim. But obviously, even if I get one fight this year, I'll be very happy. So I'm going to just stay focused and let's see what, what happens in the future. We just hope that everybody stays safe away from this coronavirus. Hopefully, when all this clears up, then we know exactly what's going to happen. Okay, great, champ. We do have some more questions. Hey, you can hold on for a second so I can read them. Uh, from Jessica Palmeta, a uh, journalist from Argentina. Okay. Um, you know, you did... Um, you know, she wants to basically ask, uh, you know, in your experience, you know, how, how much more difficult or different was your fight when you're fighting in the amateur level uh, versus fighting in the professional level in boxing? Yeah. You see, as an amateur boxer, you only have maybe three rounds or four rounds when I was fighting. And it's not many rounds to show your show, showcase. Some fighters start slow. Some fighters start fast. You, look, you see, I was quite lucky where I was a fast starter. Now, that's why I always prefer professional boxing than amateur boxing because it's a 12-round fight. It's more rounds. You could be losing the first three rounds in a professional fight, but you can come back and knock the guy out in the mid rounds or the, towards the end of the fight. So I think it's always good to have more rounds. So that way it makes it a little bit more, uh, it gives a chance to the opponent to come back. And, uh, you know, it's good for the fans as well. Short fights, so you don't really get to enjoy them. Long fights are the ones that you enjoy more of. Okay, thank you, champ. I will remind the participants that you can ask questions anytime. Le recordamos a todos los participantes que pueden hacer preguntas al campeón en cualquier momento. Juancho, ¿tenemos preguntas? Ok, yo sé momento, Chan. A ver, eh, Damien Faro quiere participar. Damien Faro wants to participate. Go ahead, Damien. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you for taking my question. But uh, I just want to ask, 
<clears throat> are you still like to me it seems like you're cherry picking your own fights are you wanting to be active are you wanting to fight for chan- uh, world champions again uh what's next for Amir Khan? i want to see you headline and big events so i just want to know what your thoughts are on this Okay, Damien, hold on a second. Sham, are you still there? Yeah, that's better. So you have to unmute it. Sorry about that, uh, Ludo. So yeah, uh, brilliant question. Listen, amazing question, um, Damien. And I tell you, so basically, you know, when I had the last fight, obviously the last fight wasn't at the caliber that I I'd normally fight at. I normally fight the top 10 guys and stuff like that. See, it was after the Crawford fight. Uh, I fought Crawford, who was probably one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. And when I fought him, obviously I got beat in that fight. And then literally eight weeks later, I get a phone call from uh, Saudi Arabia to say, would you like to host a fight? Now, that's the reason we went and took that fight. And it, I know it was against Billy Dip. He had to move up to uh, upper weight to fight me. But that's the fight that the promoters put for me and put in front of me. You see, I just had an operation on my elbow at the time. And it said to me that, look, um, and they, they were the ones who agreed to take, to take that fight on. So really, when it comes to cherry picking, I don't think I've ever cherry picked my last my, my fight apart from the last one, which was a little bit more easier. And I think I was the A side going into that fight. But um, no, no, I understand where you're coming from. And and also, um, look that in the future I want to fight maybe one or two more times, and let's see what the options are. I want to. Um, there was talks of me fighting Kel Brook, and then what he did was go up to 154, where he knows that I'm a 147 pound fighter. So why move up to 154? Secondly, you know, there's other big names around there, like the Garcia, Danny Garcia rematch. I would love to have the rematch uh, with him would be amazing. Um, and, you know, let's see where things turn out. Let's just hope that it opens up quite soon because the longer we're leaving it, you know, I'm 33 now and I want to make sure that I, you know, get these next couple of years and keep myself very busy because, you know, you're getting older and obviously you need to keep yourself moving as well. Spawn. Uh, no, I, I totally agree. Uh, I just love to see you uh, in the ring with Hellbrook. That would be amazing. Yeah, man. I mean, look, uh, that's a fight that everybody in the UK wants to see. And, um, you know, I've even, when we, me and Eddie Hearn, when I was with Eddie as my promoter, we spoke about that fight and I was cool with it. When we started negotiation on that fight at 147, Hellbrook then decides to go up to 154, yeah. which I don't understand why, you know? And I think, yeah. in a way, I know I get all the blame that I don't want the fight, but I'm not, I wasn't the one. I was. I'm still the one at 147, and obviously the fight was supposed to be made at 147. But then why did it get made out? Why did he move up to 154? You know. Yeah. So, so there's a lot to it, really. And uh, obviously, a lot of the fans and a lot of boxing people don't really know much about the behind the scenes, what really happens. I think I, I think that's 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 the case because behind the scenes, no one knows what goes on. Uh, exactly. And I yeah. think, I think, but look, you heard it from uh, me, man. And uh, obviously, look, um, no, no, yeah. no, that's great. It's great. Like, obviously, we, we've had a chat here, and I think that, uh, yeah. we thank the WBA for that. this because we have to thank the WBA for this because you would never have got the answer if you didn't ask me on the WBA, exactly. Uh, thank you, the WBA. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm here. I've watched you in the Olympics. Still vote for you, still fight for you. Oh, thank Keep you very much, man. What are you doing? And, uh, no, no, I really appreciate it, on, man. Let's see the big shiny lights. <laughs> no, yeah, we bump into you one day. All right, bro. Nice <laughs> yeah, to you, no man. Take care. Best. Thank you. Tell her. Bye. I think the host has gone. I see. It's just me and you. Uh, <laughs> just me and you, then. I think me and you, you take over the show now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the family okay? Yeah, the family's okay, yeah. Obviously, I know that everybody's going through the COVID, uh, yeah. COVID-19 and it is quite difficult what the family's going through. But what I've been doing in this moment, I've been doing a lot of charity work, helping the community, helping our people, yeah. the likes of Pakistan, the likes of um, England, 
I don't know about like 50,000 food bags for families in England, giving yeah. them food, clothing. Honestly, I've been to some houses that you would not realize that these people have no food at all in the house, like nothing. Yeah. And I've gone there to give them a box of food and they've been so happy. They've started crying and saying, oh, thank you very much. We didn't know when we was going to get food again. So you see, this is what boxing gives back to our community. You know, we, we, we want to be ambassadors for the people. And I want other fighters to see this. And when you look, we make a lot of money in the sport of boxing. But it's about giving back to your community as well, giving back to these people, especially in these pandemic times like now. Go out there and help your community. Yeah. No, I thought, I've just seen a, 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 a clip of uh, Ricky Hatton tonight on uh, yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Uh, the Homeless. Uh, it, it, absolute great. Brilliant. Uh, Look, that's what life's got, about. You know, we're not going to die with our money. Yeah. Damien, sorry to interrupt, Damien. It's yeah, Hilbert no, Mendoza. How are you? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I got a couple. I, I don't know, but I think I, I got to I got to get up, and we can't find our host. But it doesn't matter because there are a couple. Of <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask Amir because there are some questions that people had, they did it in, in Spanish that I want to repeat to him. And uh, like Amir, thank once again. Thank you very much for taking a short notice. You know our our. Um, Not anytime, Gilbo. Our thank request. You. You know, to be there. Uh, you were talking about the Lamont, you know, the Lamont Peterson fight. You know, um, as sometimes I know I have to be neutral, you know, as the president of the sanctioning body. But that time, when you see that there's no kind of fairness and there's so much links between a camp and a commission, and we're an international body, we have to step up one day. I remember that I went to the news and made everything crazy. I remember that. <laughs> you know, I remember no, no, I remember. I look, Gilberto. It takes a lot of courage to do what you did that time because you stood up. You see, a lot of people don't stand up to, uh, and a lot of people, especially uh, uh, people like yourself, would not stand up to something like this. But you did for me, being a friend of mine as well. You said, look, I'm going to stand up to this because I know you were treated, treated unfairly. And this is why I've always had love for the WBA. And I always uh, respect everything they do, you know? So, no, I appreciate that. You know, as, as you may know, I was born in this business. You met my father when he was alive. Yeah. You saw how passionate. I saw fights from, from the 70s when I was little. I was like uh, seven, eight years old. I've seen all these decades with a lot of fights. But I got to tell you one thing. I'll take my hand off with you. It was the uh, Marcos Mariana fight. Because oh my God, yeah. Fights gave it all. You fought your heart out. Actually, you know, both of you were knocked out at some point. You know, I don't know how my Dana got up with that, like <laughs> with, with the hook to the bot to, to the liver. I, I can't remember. It, it was then, crazy fight. And then you know, know the tenth of the ninth. You know, you show so much courage. But that fight, particularly to me, that fight particularly to me is like um, the fight where I know I, I met your 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 character. It, it's American. Yeah. That fight defines American outside of the ring to me. That was one no, of the fights that you did. No, no, definitely. You know, uh, uh, Gilberto, it was a, it was a fight that was put on to me by uh, my, uh, you know, it was a mandatory fight. So I couldn't turn it down. I said, I'm gonna go for it. I'm not one of them fighters to lose my mandatory status for not fighting someone. I lose my title for that. So when I took that fight on, everybody's telling me, oh, my is a beast. He literally just in the fight before knocked out Victor Ortiz, and uh, I was like, look, I'm gonna go and fight this guy. And when I fought him, honestly. First of all, look, I got huge respect for Maidana. I think he's an amazing fighter. It was just my day on that night. You know, I, I, I was the better fighter on the night. And since then, he has gone on to do amazing things. But on that night, I was the better fighter and I won it. And honestly, uh, talking, after the fight, I don't remember anything. Like, uh, for the next... The, like, I don't know... Everything was, like, everything was a blur to me in that fight because obviously uh, Maidana being such a, a beast, you know. Uh, but look, what a fight it was. And look, that fight got the best fight of the year, 20, 2012 it was. No, sorry, 2010. And we got the best fight of the year. A fight that everybody still talks about to this day. We're talking about eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's a long time, you know. There you got Ludo is back. So I'll give it back to the host. <laughs> I want to listen. Yeah, to thank you. <laughs> thank God he's back. Ludo. 
He's gone again. But Gilberto, we need you back. Ok. <risa> Gracias, señor presidente. Eh, sí tenemos una pregunta de José Río Bueno. Eh, Sham, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Ok, Damian, probably you need to uh, shut down your microphone so we can... Uh... Ok, Damian, can you hear me? Okay, Cham, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask a question from Jose Rio Bueno. Basically, he's asking, in this time of you know pandemic, uh, we have to be locked in our homes. How have you been able to uh, to train, you know, to keep yourself physically and mentally in shape during these times? You know, it's been quite hard. It's been very difficult at this time. Uh, it, sorry about that. Yeah, it's been very difficult for me to keep myself fit. See, the gyms are closed. Everything in the UK is closed, basically. You can't go to the gym. And um, obviously, I have my own boxing gym, which I've been sneaking to on my own to do a little bit of boxing training. But I spent a lot of time with my kids. Look, you know, in this pandemic time, I believe that, you know, I made the use of it because I've spent much great time with my family, with my kids. I've played with them outside where normally I can't do this. Normally, I'm flying here, flying there. But this time was the first time I could spend quality time with my family and enjoy this time with them. And, um, you know, it was, it was an amazing experience uh, for me to be spend this much quality time with my family. Uh, at the same time, you know, when it comes to training, I used to train in the garden. I train in the garden with my kids. I get them involved. I say, come and run with me. Come and do some press-ups and sit-ups with me. Um, I, have a, I have a running machine and, 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 and rowing machine and stuff like that at home. So I keep myself busy. You know, sometimes even the smallest things go for a nice walk in the park. You know, we did everything. So it was, for me, it, it was okay. Thank you, Cham. Let's wait. Uh, a ver, tenemos eh, preguntas de los participantes para el campeón American, campeón mundial, ex campeón mundial unificado de los super ligeros y ex campeón mundial super ligero de la Asociación Mundial de Boxeo del Reino Unido. A ver, tenemos preguntas. Okay, Sean, but we're gonna we're asking a question from Luci Luciano Jurnet. Okay. Um, do you believe that your style of boxing was a problem for you while you were climbing divisions? Especially in the big fights, and especially when you fought Canelo. Yeah. So my fighting style, I think, definitely, it's got what, it's what got me to this position, my fighting style. Look, I have quick hands, quick footwork. I throw punches in bunches. I like to throw a lot of combinations. And what happens there is that, you know, you, you do kind of put a lot of people on the back foot. And it's an it's a exciting style. You see why I got the fight against Canelo was because I had an exciting style. I could sell tickets. People want to see me fight. Maybe that's why I got the Canelo fight, you know? Uh, you, nowadays, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of fighters out there who have uh, an amazing style, but it's not as exciting. They can't sell tickets. So the big companies don't want to... <coughs> the big uh, promoters don't want them to have a pay-per-view fight. But with me, I had that exciting style, and that's what got me the big fights against the Canelos out there, the Crawfords out there. You know, it's, uh, it's all about just having that belief in you. Always believing in yourself that I can go I can go all the way. And that's why I had in my mind. Okay, les recordamos a los panelistas que pueden hacer preguntas eh, por medio del mensaje y aquí se las, se, las, se, las, se, las, se las traducimos al campeón. We want to remind all the participants that you can ask questions through the chat and we pass it along to the champ Amir Khan. Eh, tenemos eh, una pregunta de Jessica Palmeda que tiene que ver más con el trabajo que ha hecho el campeón en Pakistán y el trabajo que quiere hacer el campeón eh, en conjunto con la Asociación Mundial de Boxeo. Chan, we have a question from Argentinian journalist Jessica Palmeda. Is, is in regards to the, um, the work that you have done for Pakistan boxing? And um, what, were you, uh, what are you doing so far? And what would you like to accomplish, especially in conjunction with your association, with, uh, with the World Boxing Association? So, yeah, basically, uh, in Pakistan, we have started to do uh, a lot of boxing events. 
Um, I started my own boxing academy, which is gyms. And what we are doing, we are trying to help the people of Pakistan, giving them an opportunity. And uh, since we've opened the gym there and the academy there, we are helping the local boxing federation. We are also helping the professional boxing federation. And hopefully in the very near future, we're going to start doing boxing events there, professional boxing events there. And I'm quite lucky and very fortunate to have a big name in Pakistan that I could pick up the phone to the main TV channel in Pakistan and say, I want to show my fight live and they will show that. And you see, so Pakistan has a population of 300 million people. And obviously I'm, I'm in that market now and I want to promote boxing there because I know I think boxing is a sport that can take you out of poverty. There's a lot of poverty in Pakistan as well, but I think boxing could be the one to take you out of uh, uh, poverty. You know. Also, I was in Panama as well. What a beautiful country it was. And, um, you know, maybe I know the question was asked by a, 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 a person from um, uh, Argentina. I'd love to one day go to Argentina as well. You see, um, I'm a big football fan. So, obviously, uh, you've had great football players and stuff like that. So, Argentina is a lovely place, yeah. Great. Thank you, champ. Uh, we do have a question from Robert Newman. The question basically is... Uh, have you have any regrets so far in your career? And uh, what do you feel were your biggest challenges so far during your career? I'm gonna ask this in Spanish, so I'm gonna translate in Spanish really quick. Yeah. La pregunta de Robert Newman, básicamente le está preguntando si hay algo que él se arrepiente en su carrera boxística y qué es lo que más grande que él siente que ha logrado en su carrera hasta ahora. Go ahead, Chan. You know, I don't have no regrets, no. Honestly, the way my career has gone, it's been amazing. And I've taken all the risks. And one thing why I don't regret anything is because everything I've done in my career, I've taken the biggest risks and I will always take them. And I think other fighters should see this and do the same thing as well. And um, yeah, you know, I've won fights, I've lost fights. I've won world titles, I've lost world titles. But to me, it's all been great experience. I've loved every bit of it. And I, it, it, I, don't, I would not change anything for it. I thank God for, you know, helping me and putting me in this position where God, you know, we would not be here. And yeah, man, I mean, I've, I've got prayers from people all around the world. See, it's boxing what made me a name. So I have to respect it. That's why I don't regret anything because it's boxing that got me here. You're muted. Um, you're, uh, no, no, I think you are muted. You're muted. No. I think Gilberto might may, may need to come back again. <laughs> Ludo's gone. Okay, they, they oh, took back, away my back, mic. Back. They took away my mic. Okay, uh, we want to remind all the participants that you can ask questions through the chat. Le recordamos a todos los participantes que pueden hacer preguntas por medio del chat y se la pasamos al campeón Amir Khan. Chan, we have to ask you this because it's been through all the news in the last month. It's really, really big in Great Britain, in England. This future fight, maybe next year, be between heavyweight champion Tyson Fury and heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. You know, mm. we know that you are a big yeah. boxing fan, of course, you know, and you are also British. Uh, tell, tell us your take about uh, this possible big super mega fight in the heavyweight division. Yeah. So they're both my friends. And, uh, you know, I respect both fighters. But if I, if I had to break the fight down and I, and I had to talk about it, the way I break it down is that you've got Andy Joshua, who is an amazing puncher. He can hurt anyone. He has great style. He, he, and, he's, and he has the Olympic background, the great amateur experience. He's an overall good technician. Then you've got um, Fury. Fury is a beast. See, Fury has shown that he can take a good punch from the likes of Wilder. Fury has shown that he, he can um, beat any unorthodox style and he can even adapt and change his style. So it's a 50-50 fight, but I'm more lean towards... Uh, Fury in this fight. Look, don't get me wrong, Andy Joshua is a great champion, so is Fury, but I just think in this fight, because styles make fights, I think Fury wins this. 
points decision. Thank you, Sean. We have a question from Chile, from Daniel Cisternas. Uh, basically, he's asking, uh, do you feel that when the sport comes back after the pandemic, yeah. the sport is going to come stronger or weaker? Is this going to be something that at the end, after, it's, after we, we go past, it's going to be better or it's going to be worse for the sport of boxing? Now, this is a good question you've asked me because you see, now we, boxing as a sport, is up against UFC, MMA. Now, for us to see, because we've had such a long time now out of the, out, out, out of the way, mm. nobody knows what's happening with boxing, but you still see UFC fighters happening, fights happening. Now, the way boxing has to come back when this pandemic is over is with a big bang. And the way you do that is the best fight the best. You need to stop making these easy fights and you need to make, stop making all these uh, fights where you know the best are not fighting the best. Imagine the pandemic's over and a big fight, for example, Joshua versus Fury happens. Then another big fight, Lomachenko versus um, uh, the the uh, another big name, another world champion. The best have to fight the best to get this to, to make this sport up there and make it people realize that look, boxing is better than MMA. Boxing is better than any other sport. We have to have the best fight in the best because otherwise, boxing is going to go downhill. We don't want boxing to go downhill. We will, at the moment we're here. We need to take it there. So this is up to the promoters to make these big fights. Great, thank you, champ. Uh, we're gonna hold on for a second. Uh, looks like we have also in the panelists former world champ from, Ar from Argentina, Marcos El Chino Maidana. Well, welcome, Hola. champ, campeón Chino Maidana. Bienvenido a, a charla especial con el campeón Amir Khan. Les recordamos a los participantes que nos pueden hacer preguntas a través del chat y nosotros se las pasamos al campeón directamente. We want to remind all the participants that you can ask questions to the champ through the chat itself and then we'll pass the question along to the champ American. Okay, let's, let's hold on for a minute. First of all, I would like to say hello to Chino. Chino, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Long time, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with my family. Hope your family is okay. Hola, todo bien, todo bien por acá. Also, Alex Ariza always talks very highly of you. He says you're a very strong and very good boxer and very, very hard training. Yes, no, I speak it. No, English. It's okay. I understand. Don't worry. Mira, Maidana, que te dice que, que Alex Ariza siempre le habla de ti. Dice que eres un boxeador muy fuerte. Y que ha estado ahí con él, que opina muy, muy, muy bien de ti. Está Gilberto. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Ale Ariza, hemos compartido. Bueno, con Ale. Como, como preparador físico. Queremos yeah. saludar a Alex Ariza. Yeah, I'm just telling him, I'm just translating, Amir, what, whatever he said, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and I also want to say, look, it's great to see a fighter that. I fought, even though, you know, whatever happened in the fight, but, you know, we got a huge respect for each other and I wish him all the very best with whatever he does in his life. Chino, que... ¿sigue ahí, Chino? ¿Te me fuiste? Sí, sí, estoy, estoy, estoy. Me dice que, que le agrada mucho ver a un, a un antiguo rival de él, que independientemente de todo lo que ocurrió en esa pelea, de lo fuerte que fue, pues que los dos se respeten y que estén ahí uno con el otro. Amir, do you know, do you know, do you know Chino is maybe he will come back. We don't know yet, but maybe he will come back. He's going to do an exhibition match soon. Yeah, I wish him the best. I wish him all the very best. Tell him he needs to come back. People miss him. Dice que la gente te extraña, Chino. Sí, sí, sí. No, la verdad que no sé si vuelvo todavía. Estamos en eso, viste. Estamos esperando, ¿no? A ver que, que cómo, cómo sigue la... I have a question for you too. Tengo una pregunta para los dos. What was Amir? First, you. What was the most difficult? Uh, what was the most difficult thing for you to overcome, Maidana? He punched hard. Every punch he hit me with would hurt me. I mean, <laughs> he was so physically strong. He would not take a step back. I remember when I hit him with the body shot. Anyone else with that body shot would have left, stayed down. He got back up, and I was like, "Oh my God, how has he got up?" So respect to him there. 
Dice que, sí, yo, yo le pregunté que qué fue lo más difícil de, de, de lo que, cuando, cuando se enfrentó, qué era lo más difícil que él vio en ti. Dice, la fortaleza física, la pegada y que todavía no se imagina cómo te levantaste. Y para ti, ¿cuál fue lo más difícil de Amir Khan? Y lo más difícil, la velocidad. Para mí la velocidad es que, y el, tuvo, tuvo resistencia, tuvo, yo creo que fue bien entrenado por los París, Ah, al 100. He, he said, Amir, he said that speed. That was that was the key, you know, that was what I got confused with speed. And then he thinks uh, you took his blows and then he thinks you were well prepared for this fight because Arisa, yeah. because Arisa was with you. I got a, I got a second question. Will you ever fight a rematch if, if, if Chino comes back? Amir, we lost Amir. Le pregunté, Chino, si, si tú volvieras, si, si, si por ahí un aficionado preguntó que si tú vuelves, tú hubieras yeah, la sorry, um, I said, um, <laughs> tell my Dan, let's do it, let's do another fight, come on, let's do it again. Everybody <laughs> loved the first one, so let's do it again. <laughs> That would be a fun fight. Oh, man, sure. it'd, be, it'd be a much fun fight, you know. It's a fair Chino. fight again, so yeah, let's do it, man. Chino, dice que, dice que si vuelve, que, que hagan la revancha. <laughs> sí, me gustaría, sería buena. <laughs> hey, one condition. One condition. Una condición. Una condición. Alex will leave the me. Ya, que la Isa se queda con él, no contigo. Dice que la va a quedar Hugo, I'll give back the host. I'm taking the work of my host. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. You know, while we wait for the rematch between Amir King Khan mm -hmm. and Marcos Chino Maidana, we want to remind all our participants right now that you can ask questions through the chat and we relay we will relay those questions to the champ Amir Khan mientras esperamos la revancha entre Amir Khan y Marcos el Chino Maidana le recordamos a los participantes que nos pueden hacer preguntas por medio del chat y se las pasaremos al campeón Amir Khan de inmediato estamos ya casi casi a la hora estamos ya casi ocho minutos de terminar así que a ver si nos mantenemos unos segunditos mientras vemos hay preguntas. Hugo, yo tengo una pregunta. No sé, el mute me llega y me sale así automático. No, ok, no un momentito, si un momentito. Usted... <ríe> Okay, uh, Chan, we do have a question. And I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. just read it. Um, sure. This, this, this question is for Bilal. It says, Amir, do you regret uh, not dedicating yourself a little bit more, staying more in the gym between camps, kind of like Roy Mayweather usually did during his career? You know, it's hard to say because, you know, as an eight year old boxer, I started boxing and I was always living in the gym, you see. And then, as I got older, the only time I now, only now, as I've got like maybe the last year, one year, I started keeping the gym a little bit more. But yeah, I do regret it, but at the same time, I don't because I don't because I think the love for the sport was still there. If you do it too much, it can you can get bored, you see. And I didn't want to do it too much that it gets boring. So that's the reason. But look, no, you are hundred percent right. What you're saying that I should have spent more time in the ring. Maybe I would have been a better fighter. But you know, this is something um, I never did. But I think it may have helped. Thank you, champ. Okay, we're almost done here. We have six minutes to go, and uh, we don't seem to have more questions. Do we have any last question there, Juancho? Queremos preguntarles. Okay, we have one more question. Let's, let's wait. Okay, uh, we have a question for M. Ali. Basically, it's, it's asking, and this is kind of a similar question that you already uh, went through, yes. but basically, if there was anything you could go back and change in your career, what would that be? What, what specifically would you change? You know, honestly, 
It's hard to say. I don't think anything. Look, I won fights, I lost fights. And I wouldn't change anything because the losses made me who I am and the wins made me who I am. So I respect everything I ever did in the sport of boxing. And so, yeah, I, I don't regret anything. You know, I'm happy the way my career is and how it's going. So if there's anything to change, no, I don't have anything to change. I'm very happy with how my career is gone, going and go, gone in the past. So, no, I mean, I thank God and I always believe in God to make things like this happen. And I, I put it in God's hands and he's helped me to get to this position. Okay, um, we're going to stop here with the questions and answers uh, since we're just about to finish the hour. Champ, uh, we want to give you the opportunity. First of all, we want to thank you to mm. join us in this big party, you know, the number 99 convention of the World Boxing Association. This is uh, basically our, our last lap towards the 100 year anniversary next year in Russia that we hope that you come and be with us. I would love to. Sham, um, final words for all the participants and all the fans are here. Yeah. yeah, I would like to say, first of all, big thank you to WBA. Big thank you to yourself, Ludo, and also Gilberto and his son, who I met, his son, I met when he was a small child. I met Alfredo when he was very small. Now he's a big boy. Now he's bigger than his father. Hopefully he'll be a better promoter. Uh, better, a better president than his father one day, I hope. Um, but look, it's amazing. Um, the WBA family have always been very close to me. Uh, the boxing people, my fans, everybody who joined today, the media, the press. Thank you very much, everybody, for having me on. And, you know, I'll always, I always love to be like an ambassador to the sport. And in any way, however, I can help the youth, the, the, the other promoters, the organizations in boxing, I'm always there for you guys. So thank you for having me on today. And it's been lovely speaking to you all. Thank you very much, Sham. God bless. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. We want to remind everybody that tomorrow we continue with the convention and we have a very special medical seminar at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Also, we will have the forum, the veganism forum. You know, it starts at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. And also in the afternoon, we have the officer seminar at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time USA. At, at 6 o'clock, we have our closing party. Everyone is invited at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, the big closing party of the 1999 WBA convention. Eh, queremos recordarle la invitación para mañana para que nos acompañen en el seminario médico a las 10 de la mañana, hora este de Estados Unidos, también vamos a tener el foro de veganismo, veganismo a las 11 de la mañana, hora extra de Estados Unidos, y también en la tarde, el importantísimo seminario de oficiales a las 2 de la tarde, hora extra de Estados Unidos, y por supuesto, el cierre de la convención a las 6 de la tarde, con la super fiesta, 6 de la tarde, hora este de Estados Unidos. Gracias por su participación y hasta pronto.